So I'm sure most of you are familiar with my live center. If not, it's essentially just a hardened steel cone that's pressed into a set of ball bearings. And its job is to provide end support for long pieces in the lathe. It just keeps the part rigid and prevents it from deflecting away from the tool when I'm cutting. Now in order to use it, the part needs a matching center hole drilled into the end for the point to locate into. And this works for 99% of the things that I turn. But I currently need to machine up a set of pins and each pin comes with a convex point. And obviously two points won't locate into each other. Now the solution however is quite straightforward and that's going to be to use an inverted live center that has a concave end. Now I know that you can buy these or more so centers with interchangeable tips but they're quite expensive and to be honest I'm not exactly sure how much use I'll be getting from them. So instead I'll be making it myself and I'm going to make it just like a regular live center. First things first, let's start off with the materials. To make it I have a piece of 42mm mild steel and that should be just long enough to produce the Morse taper and the bearing housing. And speaking of bearings, I have these two ball bearings which are left over from an old project. Now strictly speaking, these are not the type of bearings you'd want for a project like this. These are plain, you know, deep groove ball bearings, which most bearings are. But what you'd really want is maybe a set of angular contact bearings and maybe some thrust bearings. But I think the forces, and let's be honest, the amount of usage that I'm going to be getting here should be low enough that I should be able to get away with these types of bearings. If not, I can always replace them sometime in the future. But for now, I'm going to be using what I have on hand. Anyway, let's get started. We'll get over to the lathe and we'll get the part in the lathe and clean up the end. I now need to take off about 15mm off the OD before I can form the Morse taper. And I'll be using coolant here to keep the part cool and stop it expanding and contracting when I cut the taper. With the tang now cut, I'll now turn the taper. And like always, I can do it a whole lot faster if I use a drill as a power feed. And that's a pretty good fit to me. I now get the chuck off so I can now hold the part directly in the spindle nose. I can now turn down the outside. And finally, I can turn down the bore to accept the ball bearings. I'm going for a press fit here, so the bore needs to be very accurately turned. The back face is also relieved ever so slightly towards the middle to stop the bearing from rubbing up against it. And that's the main housing now done, but there are still one or two other things left to make. The first thing I need to make is a spacer to keep the two bearings spaced apart. And making it should be quite straightforward. 
All I have to do is turn down a piece of steel to the OD of the ball bearings, bore out the center and then part it off. The other part I need to make is the center. Now I think the usual go-to would be to use a piece of high carbon tool steel, maybe W1 or O1, but I don't currently have any in the right size, so instead I'm going to be going with a piece of 1045 medium tensile rod. I can harden it a little bit, but not to the same hardness as I would get with O1 or W1, but I should be able to get away with it. Now once I've turned down the shank so that it's a press fit in the ball bearings, I'll get it parted and then set up in the Morse taper collet chuck. I'll now turn in the center into the end and then I can turn down the outside. Now I'm giving it a relatively shallow taper compared to my other live centers and that's mostly going to be to help with the clearance. This should help me get my cutters up to the end of the workpiece without rubbing up against the center or its housing. I can now harden the very tip of the cone by heating it up and then quenching it in water. Now I only need the end 5mm or so hardened and the rest of it can stay soft. And finally, the parts can be pressed together in the fly press. Alright, and that's the center now done. All in all, I think it turned out looking really nice, but the real test is going to be in the lathe. So let's get it in the lathe and see if it works. So I'll get the center into the tailstock, and then I'll get a piece of half inch 1045 rod into the lathe. I'll first machine in the convex cone on the end of it. I can then bring it out to length and get the end held in the live center. All right, and so far so good. The only thing that I would change would be the insert. It's probably not the one that I want to be using because it is having a hard time at breaking the chip. Either that or I might want to bump up the feed rate just a little bit. Apart from that though, it's holding up quite well and the live center is doing its job. Again, these aren't exactly the bearings that I would recommend for this type of project, but I'm sure they will outlast this project and I'm sure many others too. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.